immunotherapy gives you a durable response, so it's a good thing. Um, and it's less likely to develop resistance like in different So in this case, we can cure every patient very quickly. In this case, we don't cure patients very quickly, we cure them late. But this is durable and this is not durable. So one of the things we would like to do is to actually combine this therapy with this therapy. This one will give us an early response, this one will give us a late response. I don't know if this is clear. But in order to do this, we need to do it in animals. We can't try this in humans yet, so what we are going to do is we are going to use mice which do develop melanoma. And in fact, those are all the genes. Here are shown all the genes which are mutated in melanoma. And what we are going to do is to put this mutation into mice in order to create a mouse model for melanoma. So instead of taking people and trying to drug on them, we are going to take a mouse that's not sick and make it sick, make it have melanoma by genetically engineering their genes and putting mutation which we have in humans. And then these mice which have developed melanoma will be treated. Okay. And um, so we, let's not pay attention to this. And in order to do this, I, I told you about all these genes which are important for melanoma, and I'm going to tell you how we can introduce these mutations in the mice. So I'm going to start a little parenthesis here and teach you a little bit about mouse modeling um, in a few slides. So when you have a cancer, you have something that makes the cancer happen, so this is one cell, and if you uh, switch on something, a gene that's called oncogene, the cells will start dividing, okay? And there is another thing you can do, is if we switch off a gene that's called tumor suppressor gene, the cells carry on dividing as well. So in order for you to get cancer, you need two things, switch on an oncogene, switch off a tumor suppressor gene, and then you get cancer, okay? And um, in order for us to study cancer, we cannot just study it in the cell because this cancer is a disease of the whole organism. And so if you have a normal cell, if you switch on an oncogene and switch off a tumor suppressor gene and get cancer cell, what happens is that there is an interaction with all the cells which are surrounding the cancer cell, which is called stroma. There are new blood vessels that form in the cancer cell. There are immune cells which the a cancer cell will interact with, and there are also normal cells which will interact with. So, and then these cells will metastasize. So, the cancer needs to be studied in a whole organism. You need to study it in a whole animal. You can't just take a cell and study it. That doesn't give you the whole picture. And so again, this is why we want to study in one organism, which are, for example, mice, okay? So, I'm just going to go through this. So, Let's say we wanted to understand melanoma in humans. Why don't we study humans to study melanoma? Well, the answer is that humans are genetically very diverse. I told you that cancer, cancer is a genetic disease, and, and it's a disease that depends on the organism as well. So for example, if you were to study the cancer in the, the short guy, or in the tall lady, the response would be different. Okay, because they have different genes, they have different polymorphisms. And the same thing if you were to study cancer in these two guys here, or Laura and Hardy, or um, Bush. <laughs> oh. So what's the answer to that? We'd like to have people who are all similar. We need to study twins. No, right, this guy. So. So what's the answer to that? So this is why we need to have many, many identical twins in order to be able to, do, to study genetics. So there is no variability. I told you again, if, if, we ask, if we were studying weight, for example, well, these guys will have different reactions because they're different. Their genetic pattern is different. So the answer to that is either study this in mice, for example, the zebra fish, okay? And the only reason why you can study these in mice because the mice are also genetically diverse. But um, some people have um, thought about this long time ago and they have generated what we call 
inbred animals. And inbred animals were, are animals which they have been inbreeding, meaning um, you, you breed um, you know, animals very closely with very small genetic pools, so then at the end everybody is very identical. And so the inbred mice strains are a great tool and they have allowed to um, study many diseases. So basically the idea is that um, these inbred um, strains will be um, generating something which looks like identical twins. Okay? And so that's an important tool. So now that this tool exists and we didn't make it, somebody else has made it, okay? Um, we can do mouse modeling. So again, why mouse modeling? And I'm repeating myself again. Uh, believe it or not, mice are physiologically similar to humans. Sorry, for, I hope you're not offended by it. And um, they have, um, there's a large genetic reservoir of potential model that has been generated through the year. And um, we have identified more than a thousand spontaneous mutation, um, mutation that were um, due to radiation or chemically induced. And there is also um, genetic engineering that has led to identifying, identifying many, many uh, different genes and creating many mouse models for different diseases. Okay. So, and there is also the advances in the, um, the genomics of uh, the mice. Okay. And again, the, the transgenic technology. So having say, said all this, so now we have these mouse models. Okay. And we um, take this mutation that we introduce in mice, and I'm going to show you what it looks like, and then you can give them the drug which, you know, cure melanoma in the human setting. So this is an example. I'm glad you all finished digesting your lunch. Um, this is an example of a mouse that Andre, who is sitting here, has helped generate, or has done a lot generated. And you see that this mouse has melanoma here, melanoma here, and this is a close-up of the melanoma in these mice. And you see here a piece of skin, and you see that the melanoma here in the skin has become another tumor here, which has lost the melanoma. Okay? And then if you take the lung of this mouse, or a mouse like this, you see that there are black spots, and those are metastases or cancer that has moved from the skin and went in the lung, lung of this mice. And this happens in humans. And this is another strain of mice which we have generated. And you see that they have tumors on the tail and on the ears, for example. And actually, we have another tumor here, which is quite big for mice. And so these tumors do metastasize throughout the lung and the liver. And these mice do recapitulate what we have seen in human as to the disease progression of radial growth phase versus vertical growth phase, okay? And we have tried to treat these mice with vaccine, and what we show here is that in the mice with the benign disease or with the disease that's not very bad, we are able to cure them as shown here. Those are the control, those are the treated mice which don't have cancer anymore. Those are the control mice which all die because of cancer. And you see that this is a vaccinated group which was treated with immunotherapy and they don't have cancer anymore, but they don't have pigment as well, so that's why they have white fur. And this is another model which is more aggressive, has metastasis to the lung and the brain, and everybody dies of the disease and nobody responds to the vaccine treatment. That's why we need the combination therapy. And so the goal of our group is to actually take this targeted therapy molecule, which do work in human, and to take the immunotherapies which also do work in humans and combine them in these unique models which we have generated in order to understand how they work. And the goal, the ultimate goal is actually to determine how both therapy should be combined, determine the best schedule, and define the optimal outcomes. And this will directly inform clinical therapies in humans or clinical trials in humans where we be combined.